Hey Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into our Atlanta Falcons news and rumor video here on a Thursday, just a couple of days before the start of training camp. We begin with some very interesting news, and this comes via Twitter, as you'll see from an NFL Insider's Twitter account in just one second. But you see the headline below me, the Falcons have officially called regarding Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, this is not necessarily, I would say, massive shock, but the timing of it doesn't make a lot of sense, and we'll break that all down for you, because obviously, when you think about the Falcons needing a quarterback, a bridge quarterback between now and whenever Desmond Ritter is ready to play does make some sense. However, wouldn't you want to do this before you sign Marcus Mariota and not after signing Marcus Mariota? Are you going to bring Garoppolo in alongside Mariota? Will they even make this trade? Who knows? But let's first jump into where this uh, news is coming from. Cite the sources, as they say in journalism. Uh, this comes uh, via Marino, Cam Marino's uh, Twitter account, who is an NFL insider, a Falcons insider, as you see there. Here's the quote. Interesting update. The Falcons are one of five known teams with a call in the 49ers regarding quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo, a source confirms, end quote. So one of five. And so the market for Jimmy Garoppolo, which like ESPN said yesterday, was basically going to be the Browns and the Seattle Seahawks, is now not just two football teams. It is five football teams, and one of them uh, is, of course, the Atlanta Falcons. Now, Jimmy G is an interesting uh, guy overall because he just came back from a season just finished the season last year where he took the 49ers to the NFC championship game his second time going to the NFC championship game in what three four years with the San Francisco 49ers had offseason shoulder surgery that seems to be healthy and healed he seems to be ready to go for what could be a very successful season for a guy who is grossly underrated but still not considered one of the great quarterbacks in the National Football League the thing about Jimmy Garoppolo too is he still has a 24 million dollar I mean deal going into this year so if you trade for him you got to be able to four 24 million dollars added on your football team which right now the NFL Falcons do not really have they have about 12 to 13 million dollars uh, of free cap space. Now, they do obviously have the issue of Marcus Mariota. If you just had Desmond Ritter, this trade makes a ton of sense. I'd be all for this. I think he'd be a massive upgraded quarterback. He would instantly make this, the uh, Falcons a lot better. Not going to make them maybe a playoff team, although maybe he could. Who really knows? It depends a lot on the defense, but it would be an upgrade. But you already have Mariota, and you've had Mariota since day one of free agency, since right after trading away Matt Ryan. And so he's kind of come in and been the you know QB1 and been training like being QB1, been learning the Arthur Smith offense, and seemingly has you know, the head coach's support behind him being that they were both together on the Titans just a few years ago. And so the question is, if you were actually going to go ahead and trade for him, what happens to Marcus Mariota? Do you cut him? Is he included in the deal? Do you ship him somewhere else? Do you keep him on the roster? That doesn't seem very likely because you don't want Ritter to be quarterback number three. You want him to be quarterback number two. So again, this is just, you know, a sourced, I'm not going to say rumor. This is, you know, from a source saying, they did make a phone call. Doesn't mean they're actually going to trade for him, but actually getting him onto the roster would be a very, very confusing and a little bit difficult for me to go ahead uh, and at least visualize right now. But crazy things have happened, and now that Garoppolo is available, uh, available, available for trade, excuse me, there's going to be a team out there that will eventually pull the move, and before training camp is definitely more likely due to the fact that training camp is just a couple of days away. Okay, add rate, put in comments down below. Uh, would you trade for Jimmy Garoppolo as a Falcon fan? Type T down below for trade or type P down below for pass. Very curious to see where Falcon fans are at on this. All right, now I want to move over to what the uh, today's video was originally scheduled to be, and that was the five preseason camp moves the Falcons should make, whether internally or externally. But I wanted to obviously start with the breaking news of the, the Garoppolo phone call, at least, inquiry about Jimmy Garoppolo. And so now we dive into some moves I think Atlanta could make, whether it be over the next couple of days leading into training camp or kind of during the start of training camp. Some you know, moves making trades, moves making signings, or some internal stuff that they should go ahead and figure out now, figure out sooner rather than later. Let's start with number one here, and that is an internal move. It's not necessarily even a move. It's what they're going to have to kind of shuffle things around to figure out, and that is the left guard spot. We got to figure out what the left guard spot is actually going to do. Who's going to be the starting left guard on this football team as it was an absolute disaster last year with Jalen Mayfield starting. Now, Mayfield is seemingly the guy who's most likely going to start at left guard, at least for the start of training camp. That can obviously change if you sign somebody or other people behind him play better uh, on the depth chart. But Mayfield is the guy who struggled a lot last year. And I guess the hope is if he stays as the incumbent left guard, then he can progress on what he was able to do, which again was not much in 2021. If you go to the overall offensive line, you have Justin Schaefer there as a backup, but very much a backup. Be very surprised if he were to actually win the job, although, again, it is an open job. Not like they are, you know, praying that Jalen Mayfield's going to win it. They want the best guy to do it. You also have Drew Dahlman, though. I think Dahlman is an interesting option here. You hear a lot about Dahlman versus Hennessy as the center battle, and that is 
a real center battle. It's going to happen, they've said, during training camp, is you'll start out with Hennessy as the one, Dolman as the two, but that can easily be shuffled around if Dolman plays better. But what if Dolman plays very, very well and you want to move Hennessy to left guard or vice versa? What if Hennessy wins the job but Dolman still needs to be a starter? You can move him over to the left guard spot. That is one position battle and really one move they need to figure out how they're going to do it, which, again, is not going to take place before training camp, but for a weeks of training camp, this is definitely a move and definitely a roster spot I am keeping an eye on. Now, what about an external move? Do you guys think there's an external move the Falcons should make before camp? Is there a trade? Maybe it's Jimmy Garoppolo. Maybe it's a signing of some free agent. I don't know. What do you think? Is there a one move the Falcons should make before training camp? Let me know what that is in the comments section. Now, I think there is one free agent move that I that I would at least consider. And we talked about this in the past a couple of days ago on a, a video here on the channel. And that is signing a defensive lineman. Now, I, I think adding a, a, a pass rusher could be crucial. And I think it'd be crucial for the development of some of the younger pass rushers on there, most notably Arnold Ebicady. Right now, Evie Cady is going to have a ton of pressure on his shoulders as seemingly the de facto pass rusher on this football team. Like, sure, there's Grady Jarrett and there's some other guys that were there, obviously, last year. But Evie Cady has a lot of expectations to instantly make an impact. And I think he's going to be really good, a second-round draft pick out of Penn State. But will he be really good right away? If you were to go out there and bring in, you know, a free agent pass rusher, not somebody you know, super special, but a guy like maybe Jason Pierre-Paul, who you could sign to a decent contract, you know, give him a one-year deal, let him come in and be a mentor and also a starter and kind of hand it off to uh, Evie Cady instead of expecting Evie Cady and Lorenzo Carter to instantly be great. Now, I don't think they'll actually make this move. I'd be very surprised they were to get Jason Pierre-Paul, more because I think Jason Pierre-Paul is at the tail end of his career and wants to play for a winner. But I would be all for something like this or another pass rusher that is available to at least add a little bit more depth, maybe a little more seniority on the defensive line to help grow these young pass rushers who eventually can be really good starting pass rushers in the future for Atlanta. Okay, what's really good right now, too, as well, is the 40% off deal you see on your screen right now for this two-pack Falcons polo combo. You get two polos for virtually the price of one. Polos normally... At least Falcons gear is like 60, 70 bucks. This is on sale. 40% off. You get both of them, both of the colors. Pick them up right now. Catchports.com forward slash Falcons Polo. And link is down below me. Uh, also in the description box where you can pick that one up. Do it quickly though because the 40% off deals don't last long and the sizes go quick. So get your size and your polos right now. Uh, another pre-camp move, which I... Uh, they're obviously not going to make pre-camp, and again, we're trying to emphasize this is kind of a pre-camp plus during training camp move, but I think cutting Deion Jones is going to be the right move eventually. Now, whether that takes place next week, whether it takes place next month, whether it takes place before week one, I don't know, but I just don't see a, really a spot for Deion Jones on this linebacker depth chart, and it's based on the, it's really the, the, the play of Troy Anderson so far. Now, early, you know, you have a rookie mini camp, talk about OTAs, you only learn so much from a young linebacker at these places where they're not doing 11 on 11s, they don't have pads on, but I think Troy Anderson 100% deserves to get a shot at starting, and you also have Rayshon Evans, you know, you have Michael Walker, you have a lot of young linebackers on this team who I'd rather see play because you know they're going to be here for a long time versus Deion Jones, who is either on his way out or is either at the final year of his career, like they're not going to re-sign him, so I, I think cutting him or trading him is definitely a necessity, I've been saying that all offseason long, I think maybe they'll wait a couple of weeks in training camp just to confirm that Troy Anderson is good to go, and if he is, then boom, see a Deion Jones, I know the injury thing is an issue too, but I I think just see Jones not being a Falcon for long. What do you think? What are the chances that Jones is on the roster week one? Like week one of the NFL season, what are the chances that Deion Jones is going to be on the roster from a scale of one to 10? Like 10 being for sure he's going to be on there, one being he's not going to be on there. Let me know down below. And while you're at it, you might as well subscribe to the channel. I know a lot of new people are watching this channel each and every week. Uh, training camp is next week. Like literally it's going to be it's July 31st or July 21st on filming this. Training camp less than six days away. We're going to be doing nonstop Falcon coverage all month long essentially leading up to the preseason games and beyond so make sure you guys hit that red subscribe button go down below uh you will not be disappointed okay i want to go into number four here and again this is not a a, a external move that's not the point of this video it's not we're talking about only guys they can go out and sign how we emphasize the progression of drake london now they already should be doing this i should have to say this out loud but london needs to have an instant impact he needs to be ready to go week one and it's not because you know you want to overwhelm him but He's an eighth overall draft pick, and he's in a wide receiver depth chart that, that greatly needs his help. And the priority, whether it's Garoppolo or Mariota or Ritter who starts week one, who cares? If you want to have success on offense, sure, the offensive line has to play well. Sure, the running backs have to be good, but London's got to produce. I don't need 1,500 yards, but I at least need 800. I at least need five touchdowns. You know, I at least need 60 catches. Like, the guy's got to be ready to go week one. And so as you try to whittle down what is a crowded wide receiver depth chart, I think the emphasis in the progression has got to be focused in on London, throw Kyle Pitts in there as well, because these two are going to be the future stars of this offense, uh, at least on the outside. 
Okay, final move is very similar to the one we just talked about with Drake London, but that is elevate Tyler Algier as quickly as possible. I'll be shocked if Algier has a bad training camp. And if you don't hear Tyler Algier's name a lot on this show, on Twitter, Falcon blog writers, AJC, whatever outlet you get your Falcon stuff from, that's not us, which should be us, but wh wh whoever it is, uh, Algier is going to have a great camp. And I'll be shocked if you don't hear a lot about him. I think that he needs to be elevated to running back one behind Cordero Patterson, 1B, whatever you want to call Cordero Patterson uh, in this offense, as I think he's going to be ready to go. That's a lot of speculation. That's a lot of guessing. You know, we haven't seen him on a football field. Any sort of 11 on 11s, you know, how quickly is he learning the NFL speed and the NFL system and all of that jazz? I don't know. So he maybe he's not ready, you know, you know, as quickly as I would like. But this is a guy who needs to start because this depth chart is is a little bleak. I'm not a big, uh, you know, you know, Williams fan. I'm not a big Allison fan. I, I just think that right now he's your best shot at having a legit running a rushing attack. And so you got to elevate him as quickly as possible, especially if he's ready to go. Do not hold him back just because he is a rookie. There you go. There are my top five pre-camp moves to go ahead and look into, as well as an update on the Garoppolo potential trade. Although, again, I'll be surprised if they actually make that deal. But they made a phone call, which we got to talk about. That's that's news enough. Uh, again, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Plenty more content coming up later on uh, next week as we dump into training camp. We may have a full breakdown of all the training camp news and rumors and the roster stuff and the cuts and maybe a signing, maybe a trade. Who knows? We're going to break it all down, so be sure to subscribe. For Atlanta Falcons today, I'm your host, Thomas Mott, signing off for the rest of your day.